Good morning and welcome to morning prayer here at Grace Lutheran Church in River Forest, Illinois. It is good to be gathered together, beginning our day in worship and praise of our God from wherever we are gathering uh, this morning, whether you're uh, across the street or somewhere across the country. We welcome you today and we are glad that you are here. A reminder for those of you who will be attending Cornerstone's Bible study that that will begin shortly after morning prayer uh, ends. I'll start the Zoom and the link has been sent out for that. We will also gather in worship via live stream this evening for evening prayer at 7 p.m. with Lent fellowship time on Zoom to follow. Again, it is good to be gathered together today. I invite you to pull up the bulletin to make sure that you can fully participate in worship today. O oh, oh Lord, open my lips. Fight those who fight me, O Lord. Attack those who are attacking me. Take up shield and armor and rise up to help me. Draw the sword and bar the way against those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those who seek after my life be shamed and humbled. Let those who plot my ruin fall back and be dismayed. Let them be like chaff before the wind, and let the angel of the Lord drive them away. Let their way be dark and slippery, and let the angel of the Lord pursue them. For they have secretly spread a net for me without a cause. 
Without a cause they have dug a pit to take me alive. Let ruin come upon them unawares. Let them be caught in the net they hid. Let them fall into the pit they dug. Then I will be joyful in the Lord. I will glory in his victory. My bones will say, Lord, who is like you? You deliver the poor from those who are too strong for them, the poor and needy from those who rob them. Malicious witnesses rise up against me. They charge me with matters I know nothing about. They pay me evil in exchange for good. My soul is full of despair. But when they were sick, I dressed in sackcloth and humbled myself by fasting. I prayed with my whole heart as one would for a friend or a brother. I behaved like one who mourns for his mother, bowed down and grieving. Lord God, you rose to the aid of your beloved Son against those who unjustly sought his life. Look on your church as we journey to you and rescue the poor from their oppressors, that they may tell of your righteousness and your praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
a reading from Ezra. I gathered them by the river that runs to Ahava, and there we camped three days. As I reviewed the people and the priests, I found there none of the descendants of Levi. Then I sent for Eliezer, Ariel, Shemaiah, El Nathan, Jarib, El Nathan, Nathan, Zechariah, and Meshulam, who were leaders and for Joiarai and El Nathan, who were wise, and sent them to Edo, the leader at the place called Casaphia, telling them what to say to Edo and his colleagues, the temple servants at Casaphia, namely to send us ministers for the house of God. Since the gracious hand of our God was upon us, they brought us a man of discretion of the descendants of Mali, son of Levi, son of Israel, namely Sherebiah, with his sons and kin, 18. Also Hashabiah, and with him Jeshaiah, of the descendants of Merari, with his kin and their sons, 20. Besides 220 of the temple servants, whom David and his officials had set apart to attend the Levites. These were all mentioned by name. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river Ahava that we might deny ourselves before God to seek from him a safe journey for ourselves, our children, and all our possessions. For I was ashamed to ask the king for a band of soldiers and cavalry to protect us against the enemy on our way. Since we had told the king that the hand of our God is gracious to all who seek him. But his power and his wrath are against all who forsake him. So we fasted and petitioned our God for this, and he listened to our entreaty. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Sisters, brothers, friends in Christ, grace be unto you and peace this morning. In the name of God the Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Not that our family has traveled too much of late, but it is nevertheless nice to be at a point in our lives when we can let our children pack their own suitcases. Of course, the end result can be humorous. Every once in a while, we get to our destination only to discover that one or the other, one or the other of the children has uh, included six or seven stuffed animals, but no extra pairs of socks. Uh, still, they, they usually do a good job, and we facilitate this process by giving each of them a checklist to guide their work. And while I don't usually write out a list for myself, I certainly carry one around in my mind as I'm packing. If we're going to be gone this long, I'll need this many of these and that many of those. And because I like to be ready for anything that might come up, I always throw in a few extra of nearly everything, which means we always end up with too much stuff wherever we've gone to. Journeys require planning and provision who sets out on a trip with nothing at hand? A reading this morning from the book of Ezra brings us into the perhaps unfamiliar biblical territory of the post-exilic period in the history of God's people Israel. But the starting point is familiar enough. It is the beginning of a journey, a long one at that. We see thousands of Israelites gathered at the river Ahava in Babylon, ready to travel home to Jerusalem, to the city of their ancestors. Now, possessions are mentioned, but Ezra, the scribe who leads them, makes no real mention of physical preparations made or the supplies needed or obtained. There is no talk of wagon trains or beasts of burden, of food lists or clothing needed. Surely they have such things, 
But the focus of the people was not on their fullness, but on their emptiness. Ezra is worried that asking for a military escort from Artaxerxes, the king of Persia, who is allowing them to go home from Babylon, would make it look like he, Ezra, and the people didn't really trust in their God to protect them along the way. But he knew they dearly needed protection. They are embarking on a journey of 500 miles as the crow flies, but over a route that will take them 900 miles and take their assembly four months to travel. So Ezra calls a fast at the water's edge that in denying themselves before God, God would grant them safe passage home. And this is precisely what God does. Ezra, descendant of the chief priest Aaron, restorer to the people of the law of Moses, leads the people of God on a second exodus, walking home on the straight level path through the wilderness that Isaiah had foretold. For those of us, including myself, who do not fast often or ever, this passage might be hard for us to wrap our heads around. Is it transactional? Does fasting force God's hand? Would God have not protected the people had they not offered this fast before setting out? Well, in the Habits of Grace devotion for today, Pastor Bruce Modal writes, Perhaps what Ezra offered up was not as transactional as it sounds. Jesus tells us to petition God in the prayer he taught us. In his small catechism, Luther explains that when we pray, give us this day our daily bread, we are asking for everything we need to live. And so Ezra, at the beginning of this journey to Jerusalem, hearkens back to the people's earlier journey out of bondage and slavery. Having fled the Egyptians without time to sufficiently prepare, the people were newly dependent each and every day. And they discovered that each day God met their needs, first with manna and then with manna and quail, gifted daily in the wilderness. Ezra knows that to successfully journey home with God requires an emptying of oneself and an openness in faith to the provision of God. The journey depends less upon what we bring and much more upon the God who goes with us. To begin the journey with a fast is not to bargain with God. It is to open oneself to the saving presence of the Lord by realizing an ever-deepening dependence upon God. Ezra's fast anticipates for us the self-emptying love of Jesus Christ at the beginning of his journey. For we, you and I, we are finally unable to find our way home. We are always entirely dependent upon the grace and the mercy of God. And so it is that Christ has come into this world to make level a path for our homeward journey by conquering sin and death for us. As Paul recounts in his epistle to the Philippians, Jesus begins his journey by emptying himself, not counting equality with God as something to be grasped, but taking on the form of a slave and humbling himself even unto death, even unto death on the cross. And it is through this pouring out of self that the Father works glory and victory through the Son. In the weak emptiness of the cross, space is created for the fullness of resurrection and life to rush in. Jesus journeys home on our behalf, inviting us now to follow this one who is the way.
we need not bargain with God nor seek to prevail upon him. The work is complete in Christ. But still we walk. And as we continue along the homeward road this Lent, we ask, what shall we bring with us? Ezra reminds us that our emptiness is a good place to start. The reformer John Calvin writes, let us show ourselves to be such disciples as our Lord wishes to have, poor, empty, devoid of self-wisdom, eager to learn but knowing nothing, and even wishing to know nothing but what he has taught. Friends, there is so much for which we yearn during these ongoing days of pandemic emptiness, and God knows of these needs and cares for our provisions just as much, even more than God cares for and provides for the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. But God can use, is using, our openness and our emptiness. So whatever fasting looks like in your life, I commend you to it. Perhaps it is a Lenten giving up of one or two things. Or perhaps, as Pastor Modal invites in his devotion today, it is a fast from food for an entire day, health permitting. Perhaps it is simply but profoundly and spiritually a, a recommitment to adopt what we might call a posture of fasting in which we continually call to mind and heart our total dependence upon the grace of God. Discipline yourselves, friends, that you might better know and learn to depend upon what is always the free gift of our God in Christ. The journey is always long. At no starting point can we plan for and prepare for all the eventualities and vicissitudes that life will throw our way. But we can trust in the emptiness. Have faith in the God who delights still to give daily bread day after day. Believe in the Christ who has gone on ahead to prepare a place for you, who journeys now with you, who died and is now raised to make sure you are seen safely home. No more are we exiled in a land of sin and death. We might begin the journey empty-handed, but we find ourselves traveling hand in hand, held ever in the hand of Christ. For his sake, God will keep us and bring us home. Amen. And now may the peace that passes our human understanding keep your hearts and your minds safe in Christ Jesus this day and forever. Amen. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But, but now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son.
Let us pray for the church, the world, and for all people according to their needs. God of grace, we come before you empty-handed. We need your presence. Teach us to depend less upon ourselves and more upon your promise of daily bread and provision. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, we wander as exiles in the land of sin and death. We praise you for Christ, who makes clear and level our path home through the wilderness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of help, we pray for those who do not have enough, for those who are hungry or homeless, sick or alone, suffering or dying. We pray that you would come to them, lift up your church to care for the needs of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of hope, give us strength to keep the fast until it is time to gather for the feast. Journey with us during these days, trusting in your promise of forgiveness and new life. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. O Lord, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord Almighty bless us and direct our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen.